When Bogdan Bogdanovich pulled off the hit this shot, no one in the Golden 1 center could possibly have known that the 28-point lead the Kings had built to this point would slowly drift away. It still looked like an impossibility as the minutes ticked by in the fourth quarter, and I don't think anybody could believe how this game ended. What seemed like an impossibility for the visiting Nets got closer and closer to reality with each fourth quarter possession. But there was really only one good reason why Brooklyn had any chance at all. And it's easy to explain with two words. D'Angelo freaking Russell. The Nets turned to their leader in the fourth, and even as he hit this post up, there was virtually no energy coming from their bench. But they weren't making any headway as Giles spins to the baseline for the layup to get the lead back to 20. Russell's gravity pulls Giles way out of position on this slip ball screen the next time down, and the easy lob gets him an assist on the layup to cut the lead to 18. The next possession, Russell steals the poor skip pass from Giles and takes off down the court. With the smaller Farrell on him, he crosses over, then Euro steps into the defender and awkwardly twists this layup in. Knowing they need a lot of points in a hurry, the Nets are wasting no time as this Bagley shot from the baseline misses. Heald's attempt at an offensive rebound leaves the Kings naked getting back on defense. Barnes backs up way too far, and Russell just lets it fly for three. It's time for a heat check to see how hot D'Lo is, and De'Aaron Fox found out the hard way. And now the bench is back to their usual energetic selves as hope has been reborn. On this fast break, you'll see Willie Cauley-Stein come over to the ref to complain about something. It's not really clear what. Perhaps he was mad that this contact by Kurix wasn't called the last play down. But in hindsight, giving the Nets an extra point with no time rolling off the clock is crucial. The Kings ran some great offense here, getting Heald wide open on a hammer screen to the corner. After Kurux flies by, Heald barely misses the corner three. Hurrying back down the court, the Kings are cross-matched. Colley Stein doesn't realize Dudley is his man until it's way too late. And this game is down to seven sports fans, and the whole Nets bench is on their feet. Dudley is the kind of guy you want in a game like this. Check the hustle and then draws the charge to get another possession back. It wasn't all flowers and sunshine for the Nets in the fourth as the referees completely missed this call. It clearly goes off of Fox's chest, but they give it back to the Kings. Fox struggled to execute in the fourth, but credit the defense with a strong double team and Jefferson tips this ball into a turnover off the pick and roll. Barnes makes a huge mistake to foul Russell on this quick pull up from three, since the only thing you cannot do in the King situation is give him a chance to score three points with no time rolling off the clock. D'Lo does miss the third free throw, but the lead is now down to five. Down by eight, Dudley sets a step-up screen near half-court. Bielitsa never calls it out. Fox has extremely poor recognition not to see it. And just look at Bielitsa turning his back in a desperate attempt to stop Russell, who's going downhill in a hurry for the layup. The Kings weren't devoid of any highlights down the stretch. How about this crazy Bagley tip over Jefferson for an eight-point lead? But you had to know something was up when Fox tips this ball out of D'Angelo's hands. It lures Barnes too high so he gets beat immediately. And with only Bielitsa protecting the rim, it's another twisty layup to cut the lead to six. But the King has continued to execute. Check the high post split in the weak side. Heald senses Kuruks a step too high, so he backdoors and gets the nice finish. But it's time to start trading those twos for threes. And Dudley again sets the ball screen almost at half court Bielitsa backs up too much, so D'Lo just lets this one fly and boom, cuts the lead to five. What? While the Nets didn't let the referee's calls against them bother them at all, De'Aaron Fox loses the dribble off what he thought should have been a kicked ball. It didn't hurt the Kings as Russell misses the open three off the rim, yet Fox simply won't let it go. He's still talking to the ref while bringing it up the floor, and I think it directly leads to this bad pass and turnover. But Jared Dudley misses the wide open layup. Can you hear me shaking my head? Because I am. With a five point lead and a desperate team on their heels, the last thing you want to do is burp up a long two quickly. Yet Harrison Barnes tosses this one up, it bricks, and here come the Nets. 
Check Buddy Heald foolishly helping off Russell for no reason, and it gives him daylight on the catch to let this one go. And he doesn't need any help from the rim on this one, folks. If you're enjoying this, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and you should also check out a video I did in partnership with the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague and 7 Days, the number one croissant in the world, as I broke down the out-of-timeout plays of one of their best coaches, Sharunis Yasekovicius of Zalgiris. His wisdom could have helped D'Angelo Russell on this head-scratcher as he inexplicably fouls De'Aaron Fox 94 feet from the basket. This should have been a killer for the Nets, but Fox misses the second free throw. Another high ball screen by Dudley in the next possession, and you can see Bielitsa had no idea where his man was until it was too late. He has no hope of staying in front, no one else is there, and now it's a one-point lead with plenty of time. You could even see Russell lost the ball on the way up, but it was that kind of night for him. In an effort to deny Russell the ball, Heald quickly gets out of position trailing the play. Yet another high ball screen set by Dudley, and since it's set flat, meaning his feet are parallel to the half-court line, Russell has a choice which way to use it. The elites of hedges to Russell's left, he crosses over and goes back to the right, and he's off to the rim again. Barnes is helpless to stop his stronghand attack, and now the lead is one again. With Fox attacking off the pick and roll, he rejects the screen, blows by D'Lo, but it's Dudley who slides all the way in front, gets his hands pretty close to straight up, and Fox can't finish through the defensive verticality. Another fast push up the court by the Nets, Fox gets to Russell, so does Bielitsa. Bagley isn't guarding anybody, which means Dudley is standing all by himself out top for the lick my finger I'm so open three ball, and the Nets have the lead. Repeat, the Nets have the lead. How did the Kings respond? Executing a great play for a backdoor cut layup? Nope. A pick and pop from 30 feet with 19 seconds on the shot clock. I mean, really? Again, the Nets pick on Bielitsa, and I just feel bad for him at this point, but the Kings are saved when the refs ignore the foul by Bagley and Russell can't make the shot. Fox races back down. Dudley tries to draw a charge, but ends up putting Fox on the line for two points. With 46 seconds left in the game, Russell didn't appear phased at all, looking like he knew what the outcome would be. But it looked like that was premature, as the Nets don't get anything from this pick and roll and have to rely on Russell one-on-one -on -one against Heald, who does a good job. All they get is a long two and it doesn't fall. And the shot clock is in play because there's a tiny bit of time left for the Nets to get the ball back, but they have no timeouts. Tied with a chance for the win, it looks like the Kings wanted to hit Bagley in the high post and then let Fox set a rub screen for him to attack into the middle with his strong left hand. The spacing is off on the weak side, allowing Dudley to help and Graham to cover two players. Heald inexplicably brings his man over to the ball and Kuruk strips it. The ball is loose and in his effort to retrieve it, Bagley steps out of bounds. And that sets us up for the final play. Everyone in the gym knew it was going to D'Angelo Russell. So why would they run a back screen that wouldn't really get him a catch considering Bagley is in position near the passing lane? This forces the screener Rondé Hollis Jefferson to cut out high for the catch. Fox is in good position to deny the pass. The clock is winding down perilously close to zero, so Jefferson has no choice but to attack. He crosses over, he stumbles, he jumps, he loses his balance, he twists, he flips it up, and it drops in. The comeback is complete, the Kings were out of timeouts, and this goes down as easily one of the craziest finishes to an NBA game we've ever seen. Oh, hey, good to see everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you made it this far, then I've got something really special for you. A free video that you can only get by clicking on the link below. It'll break down my three favorite actions, and I guarantee you'll love it. So what are you waiting for? I'll see you on the other side of that link. Don't forget to subscribe to B-Ball Breakdown and adjust your settings so you'll get notified right away. You in?